put it down and let it go and I didn't quite get there in time. And when it fell, the, the top nag is a 12 string. So that's got the most tension and sure enough, the headstock just went foot. Hey guys, this is Kevin coming at you again here at Seymour Studio in Santa Barbara, California. Today I'm joined by a very special guest, longtime guitar tech for bands like Static X, George Benson, Incubus, and current tech for Rick Nielsen of Cheap Trick, Mr. Larry Malero. Larry, welcome Hello. to uh, Seymour Studio, man. Define special. You <laughs> called me special. What's going on here? What do you mean by that? Larry, you are so special. Well, you, know, you know how much we love you, man. Larry, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Well, so what got you into the teching thing? What got you into the industry? I can drink large quantities of alcohol. <laughs> No, I uh, just, you know, I was always a tinkerer, like, what makes this work and how can I make it better? You know, what's going on in there? Yeah. That, that felt great, you know, at 12 years old, getting shocked by an amp, you know? Yeah, so you but were I, you were opening amps at, at 12. Yeah, because, you know, either, you know, it was making a weird hum and I was like, what's going on in here? You know, and luckily I had, you know, uncles that uh, showed me how to work with my hands, so... Yeah. It was kind of neat of like, you know, yeah, you know, just, yeah, you need this, you need, ah, oh, there it is, you know, broken solder joint and a ground right. pin or whatever. And so, yeah, that's learned from them. It's and how it all started. Yeah. So did, was your family involved in music or, or guitar players or? My, they all played guitar. Yeah. So I would, there was always guitars, acoustic guitars around the house. and Yeah. You know. So what got you into electric? Van Halen one. <laughs> See what that bastard started? Yeah. Damn you. <laughs> Van Halen won, an influence yeah. as it was for so many My people. older cousin brought the album over, and I was already listening to, like, Sabbath and Zeppelin Kiss and, and all yeah. the other bands of that early 70s, mid-70s era, but he brings over that first album. I'm like, that's a guitar? Yeah. What the fuck's going on there? So that was where I was like, Mom, can I have an electric? She's like, what? No. Yeah. That's too loud. When when did you first experience Seymour Duncan? I know that you I mean you've been working with Seymour and MJ here for for decades, decades now. Yeah. What what got you into into Duncan? I purchased my first decent guitar, which was a I still have it. It's a Kramer Focus when I first got it. It was one of the one of the original ones with the the Floyd with no fine tuners, but I just it, it came with uh just the normal whatever nonsense pickups that were in yeah. there. And, I was like, no, I wanted to sound better. And I remember I had my uh, I had my uncle drive me up to performance guitars in Hollywood. And I asked the guy, I'm like, I want some better pickups. What can, you know, what can I get? Yeah. And uh, so I bought my first set. Just a JB jazz hot a, rotted humbucker. A, a JB and a jazz. Yeah. Got home, put them put in my guitar. But it was a hum single single. And oh. obviously I wanted hum, nothing hum. Right. So it was kind of like, well, how do I do this? I remember just grabbing a, Flathead screwdriver and a hammer, <laughs> and get to got we're, to knock we're, in. We're gonna make a humbucker fit in the neck position of this guitar if it kills me. Yeah, and I'm literally in the living room just hacking wood, wood chips away. Flying yeah, flying everywhere. <laughs> My mom comes walking in like, "What are you doing?" Like, this is the original this routing fit. job, folks. That's the right. Original. <laughs> I initially, actually, finally, years later, I went back and routed, you know. And these ones, it looks like, are signed by Seymour. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> took them out of the guitar finally and retired them a few years back. And Yeah. They're your special set. Which MJ just, you know, kind of yelled at me, like, put them back in a guitar and play it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, I want to get that woman angry. So, yeah, it sounds like MJ. <laughs> After hacking away at your first guitar, what? when did you start getting into the tech world? What was your first tech game? Just first band I actually toured with quite extensively was Static X. They were recording their first album. They were playing a lot around town, Hollywood, and the, just the general Los Angeles area. And they needed a tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wayne, I had, I've known all those guys for quite a while. And they kind of said, hey, you know, you're always fixing people's stuff anyway. Yeah. You, know, you want to just come out on tour with us? I was like, sure. But yeah, I toured with them. God four-ish years, all the way through the end of OzFest 2000. Then we went to Japan for a couple weeks and then came home and immediately went into my next gig, which was Incubus. So how? So you were with Incubus. How long were you, were you with those guys working working with Mike? Seven years. Mike's yeah. Mike's a longtime Duncan guy. Were you were you the influencer there? That's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> No, it was just uh, it was one of those where he wasn't overly happy. Getting a lot of feedback with the at the time was the PRSs, the, yeah. the big art, the big McCarty hollow bodies, which they're they're not high gain friendly at all anyway. But uh, I was just like, what can we do to you know get this? And so I remember I called and 
I think for his guitars, we did a lot of either 59 jazz or JB jazz, just depending on which guitar. Right. So when you're working with like a semi hollow body or a hollow body and you still want like some gain, what's the method for, for dealing with that? For Make sure for the they're folks potted. <laughs> okay, wax potting. Yes. No, that helped a lot. That was, yeah. a, that was a big, big help. Well, you've, you've shared some Incubus stories with me about uh, a couple- Hey, 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 you said you were gonna- <laughs> we, were, we weren't gonna talk <laughs> we about those on camera. Up. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we went through the PRSs and then he went to Jazz Masters and then he was playing the Jazz Masters uh, for quite a while and Mike had a uh, surgery for a carpal tunnel on his left hand. <sighs> so that kind of threw a giant monkey wrench into what guitars he was able to play. So he found an SG Junior, was quite comfortable, smaller neck. He was like, well, I need a neck pickup. I was like, well, it's just got the single P90 and the bridge. <laughs> hmm, okay. I remember I called up here and Seymour said, sure, come on up here and brought up, I think I, I think the initial, I brought four up with me between Seymour and Derek, but they made the template to route the guitars for a neck P90. It was quite an interesting process just because you route it and then it's like, well, how are you gonna fish the wire through? So now Seymour's like got these long drill bits and he's like, <laughs> Halfway from one, having admit it's it was a whole process. Yeah, I just and, and I'm sure Seymour remembers all that stuff. Yeah, just to it, get the lead wire to the cavity. Yeah, yeah just because like, you got to get it through the bridge pickup cavity down into the control cavity. Yeah. Then it's like, wait, there's no toggle switch. Okay, lose the tone pot. So volume, toggle, and then input, and that was it. And it was oh, yeah, so, so rad. It was a whole <laughs> process, but it was neat just to watch Seymour just kind of dig in and go. Okay, you know, I think he was a little, you know, perturbed at like. Are we really chopping up early 60s? Steve's what are we doing here? Yeah. You know, but it, uh, it worked out really well and he played them for quite a long time. So following Incubus, <clears throat> what 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 was the next gig? George Benson. George Benson. Yeah. So that what, was, what that was a fun little climate yeah, change. Yeah, I was about to say transitioning <laughs> yeah. from so. from the Incubus thing to George yeah. Benson. So what was that like? What was it like working with George? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I just got to sit on the side of the stage and watch him play every night. And I remember actually redoing the neck pickup in George's main touring guitar. Mm -hmm. So well, actually Seymour and MJ did it, but <laughs> you know, I just kind of watched. And, yeah. yeah, can you guys, sure, so, we'll do that. So why'd you guys have to, to mod the neck or it, what was it, the story the, there? It was too hot. It was, a, it was like a 15K neck mini humbucker. And it Whoa. was too, it was, it was, you know, George likes a very mellow, clean tone. And totally. that thing was just over the top. And when I called up here and let them know what was going on, they're like, yep, get up here. Eh. So Seymour loved it because he was a kid in Pennsylvania going to the bars to see George play. Oh, no way. Back in the, I, I would imagine it had to be like mid 60s. You know, he'd go to the, you know, I remember him telling me, he's like, I remember going to see him when I was a teenager. Yeah. But he'll be able to fill you in with that. We'll have to get the Seymour scoop on that. Yes, you have to find that out. After the George Benson days, what comes next? Did a short amount of time with Sum 41 with Derek and Cohn and Tom. That, yeah. was, that was a lot of fun. Great yeah. bunch of guys. I was finishing up a run with Sum 41 and they were yeah. going to go on a break and sure enough, I got a phone call and it's like, hey, uh, we need a guitar tech for Rick Nielsen with Cheap Trick. I don't think they were done with a sentence. I said, sure, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so. so what's it like teching for Rick? Well, I hope you like to deal with a lot of guitars. And some crazy two, guitars two too. guitars, <laughs> the five neck and Uncle Dick, the double neck that looks like him and all the other fun stuff. But no, it's 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 been a little over five years now. It's been a blast. So craziest Cheap Trick tech story. At the end of the night, he'll always take the five neck off and then just kind of set it. And as I'm walking out, he'll let it go and kind of it starts falling and I'll grab it. I didn't quite make it out there one night. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. So he, he it was it was hot and he got that guitar off pretty quick and he put it down and let it go and I didn't quite get there in time and uh, it fell. Oh. And when it fell, the the top neck is a 12 string. So that's got the most tension and sure enough the headstock just went foot. Oh man! So so did you so, repair that thing? Yeah. So the next day, the next morning, I'm like, I need a shop with you know some called around town, and I said I need to use your repair facility for a couple of hours. Yeah. They let me in. There's Pitts. I think it's like Pittsburgh Guitars. I, I'm trying to remember what it's yeah. called, but they let me in there and uh, we got the repair done. And but it was just clamped. With, yeah. With C clamps for the. It needed to dry for 24 hours. Rick played it with the clamps that night. No way. Yeah, it plays great. Everything's back to normal. Yeah. We've been using it ever since. It's Outside of the, the infamous five neck, how many guitars um, does Rick have on the road? Approximately two dozen. Two dozen. Yeah. 24 guitars. Yep. Two vaults and then just other various guitars he keeps around. So it's a different guitar for every song. So when we do a 90 minute you know, plus set, 
that's a lot of songs. You know, you start yeah. getting into the 20-ish, 22 yeah. total songs for the night, and he wants a different guitar. How do you keep 24 <coughs> guitars working perfectly every night? I have no idea. <laughs> just, I luck out and, hey, it's working cool here. I just, you know, a lot of just preventive maintenance and making mm -hmm. sure that everything's, you know, working. The ones that get played a lot, it's pretty easy. You know, they, they just, right. you know, they're, they're in pretty heavy rotation. So, yeah. And then there's a few other guitars that kind of come out once in a while, depending on the song list. How often do those guys mix it up? Or is this something that you can't? It's a different set every night. No way. They, they write the set list every, every night is a different one. I mean, there's a certain amount of continuity at the beginning and at the end. Right. But the, the, the bulk of the middle is usually... So when do you get the set list? Because that's a lot of responsibility uh, falling on you for the tech side. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll get it. It's, you know, for me and Mark uh, on stage left, for Robin and Tom, we'll uh, just kind of get the set list anywhere from a few hours to, I think we've gotten it like a half hour or less yeah. before the show. And it's like, okay, start writing down what's for what mm -hmm. song. Uh, you know, you kind of, I've gotten used to it, you know, as time's gone on, but it's a lot of fun. Pickups. What 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 are you working with? If the, you can disclose it. No, no, no. The bulk of his guitars are seventy eights. It's the one that seemed to work best for what he's doing and yeah. the kind of tone he's looking for. And well, you heard it here, folks. The seventy eight. Yeah. So. Rick Nielsen. That's right. All right, Larry. Last question before we wrap it up. Your all time favorite Duncan pickup. JB Jazz. JB Jazz. That setup works for anything. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, Larry, For me. yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what it all started with. I know. Yeah. See what you started. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Larry, thank you so much for coming up to visit the shop today um, and joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. For all the folks out there who tuned in, thank you so much. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe below and catch the episode next week. Seymour will be telling some more stories. Again, Larry, thank you so you're much welcome. for coming in. If you didn't enjoy it, it's his fault. If you loved <laughs> it, it my you're bad. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> if you hated it, my bad. If you loved yeah. it, it's all Larry. All righty, so, guys. Thanks well, thank so you. much. Till next time. Until next time, all Larry. Right. Turn those things off. <laughs>